Hallelujah. Are you ready for God's word now? Are you ready for God's word now? Amen and amen and amen. Praise God. All right, let's get into it. Believer's authority, part three. See, I'm ready for God's word. I'm ready for God's word. I will be changed. I will, change. I will be transformed by God's word. All right, Father, we believe and receive wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. We are edified, and your name is glorified in Jesus' mighty name. And the saints say, Amen. The saints say, Amen. Amen. We're ready for God's word. Okay, let's get into it. We are looking at believers' authority today. Amen. And we're going to be looking uh, a little recap a little, uh, and then getting into steam. I hope to be able to get over how to use your authority. But let's get into it. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's pick up some speed. Ephesians chapter 1. Say, I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. I am born of God. I'm born of God. Greater is he, Greater is he. That, is that is in me than he that is in the world. Is in the world. So via the resurrection, I am one with Christ. Praise God. So via the resurrection, I am one with Christ. When Christ died what happened we died with him and so now there is an identification sister you want to come have this one amen and amen praise god come on come on it's okay amen when christ died what happened we died with him we died with him we died with him we died with him glory to god thank you lord jesus and when Christ was raised, we were raised with him. And now that Christ is seated, where are we? We are seated with him. And, and we said something very crucial because if you don't understand these terms, what is all this seated, rising, and all those kind of things? It'll confuse you. There's a reason why the word seated is used, and I've explained it before, I'll explain it again. But before then, the Bible tells us that Christ is seated. Far above how many principalities? Oh. All principal. How many principalities? Oh. How many principalities, church? Oh. You know, I'm going to take you on a journey to the book of Mark chapter 5. You know, I'll go back to Ephesians 1. Because when we say all principalities and powers, it seems like people don't get what we're saying. In Mark chapter 5, is the story of a, is of a demoniac. This is a man that has been plagued with the devil. Right? Okay, in Mark chapter 5, look at verse 2. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit. Someone say an unclean spirit. Unclean spirit. Look at this unclean spirit. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. So the spirit on the inside of this guy gave him supernatural strength. Meaning, when we say supernatural strength, strength that is outside of the natural. Right? Okay, but it was demonic, right? Okay, look at it, verse 4. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could no man tame him. Think about it. The demon, or the demons, as you get to see, that was in this guy, was in such a way that this guy would snap iron chains. Okay, you get it. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself. Torment. Now notice, when he saw Jesus afar off, what did he do to Jesus when he saw Jesus afar off? He ran, he ran and worshipped him. Follow, verse 7, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God, thou torment me not. This demon, as you get to see later, these demons were plenty. They were, they were so mighty on this guy that this guy would cut chains off. But when he sees Jesus, what does he do? He runs to him to worship him. Notice the words here. Look at verse 8. And Jesus said, what did Jesus say to him? Church, what did Jesus say to him? Come out of this man, thou unclean spirits. Then see what Jesus says again. So how did Jesus command the demon to come out of this guy? He said what? Come out. 
That's my room. My point here. Look at the next verse in verse 9. And he asked him, What is your name? That's where I'm going. And he answered and said, My name is Legion. Legion. You only need to do a little bit of research to know that Legion is a word, it's a military term that is used for 6,800 soldiers. So when you say legions, you're talking of thousands of personalities or thousands of demonic operations in this guy. He says, my name is legion for we are many. many. But what gets the many out? Out in the name of Jesus. Some say authority. authority. It doesn't matter the number. My point. It doesn't matter what the demons make the, the person do. Are you getting it? I said this demon war, these demons were so terrible in this guy, he will cut off chains. But all it takes for that demon to leave that guy was someone who's got the superior spirit. You know this one is an unclean spirit. Someone with a superior spirit saying out. I'm saying to you that by identification with Christ, the same authority he has, we have. Amen. Can we get a believe in amen? amen? And so it doesn't matter the drama around demons. You are above them. Amen. Can we get a believe in amen? amen? Far above all. Someone say all. Oh. All principles. And why is this? Because we are in Christ. Hallelujah. Interesting thing about this authority that makes us actually humble is the fact that God has given the authority to the church. No, this should get you to have a weight of responsibility. God gave his authority to the church. That demon casting, healing, that, that authority of God is not up somewhere. It's in the church. It's in the church. It's in the church. And when we say the church, we are talking about saints. The ones who have believed on the gospel. Say, I am powerful. I am powerful. By virtue, By virtue. Of, the of the resurrection, I am powerful. I am powerful. That is why in Matthew 28, verse 18, he says, All power belongs to me now. Therefore, go. What power is he talking about? The power to actually bring and usher in a new kingdom and continue his work. Go into the world and make disciples of all men. It is now possible. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Church, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So what always happens is there's a tendency to forget your authority. You remind yourself. You remind yourself. For when he was raised, what else happened? We were? Raised. Church, when he was raised, we were? Raised, raised with him. And we see examples of how to use this authority. Examples of how to use this authority. Now, look, for example. You know, we, we started off saying that Ephesians 1, I was going to verse 3. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spirituals, with, with all spiritual blessings in heaven is in Christ. So the blessing is in Christ. When I get born again, I've received the Spirit. I mean, when I get born again, I am seated with Christ. Why am I, why is he calling it a sitting with Christ? It is taking, is borrowing that word from the Old Testament. Is borrowing that word from the Old Testament high priest. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 9. You need to understand why words are used. Why am I seated? Why am I seated? Let's look at Hebrews chapter 9. Are you in Hebrews 9? Yes. All right. Look at verse 6. Hebrews 9 verse 6. Now, when the things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle. Who goes into the tabernacle? The priest. The priest. Who is a priest? I'll say it many times. A priest. Look at Hebrews 5 verse 1. Who is a priest? For every high priest is taken from amongst men and ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. What is the need for a high priest? Who needs a high priest? The one that has sinned. 
Praise God. So now, now, follow. It says in verse 6, the priest went always into the first tabernacle to accomplish the service of God. So the, where did the priest go? Where does the priest go? Please put that thought in your mind. I didn't say it, you said it. Where does the priest go again? The first tabernacle. How many times does he go? Every day. Praise, praise God. Look at verse 7. But there is a second tabernacle. Amen. Or rather, there is a second. In the tabernacle, there are two places. There is a first place and there is a second place. I know people know one as holy place. And, and people know the other one as holy of holies. That's what you see in the scriptures. Beautiful. But into the second went the high priest. Once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of others. So the, the high priest of the Old Testament was a proof that he was not a successful high priest. Because the assignment of the high priest is to take away sin. And so if he had to come to take away sin every day, it is proof that he has not gotten the job done. Therefore, the Bible says the high priests are always standing. But notice, I want you to notice because you're spiritually intelligent. Where does he take the where does the high priest go into? The high priest goes where into the tabernacle. So high priests are for where? Tabernacles. High priests are for temples. Amen. 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 Please follow me. So it says, look at it, it says in verse 9, Hebrews 9, verse 9. It is a figure. So what you are saying about the high priest entering into a tabernacle every day and once a year is a what? Figure, a symbol. What does a figure mean? Meaning it's pointing to something else. Follow me. He now says in verse 9, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both sacrifices and gifts that could not make him that did service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Did you notice it here? In the sacrifice could not make the believer perfect. Look at verse 11. But Christ, being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hand. Stop, stop, stop. I want you to follow me today. Where did who is the who is the high priest of the New Testament? Christ. Jesus Christ. Where did Jesus Christ enter? According to the figure, where did the Old Testament tabernacle and um, priest enter? The tabernacle. In the New, and it says it's a figure. So in the New Testament, listen carefully, where does Jesus enter? He enters into you. So the, listen carefully, the offering of Jesus was not to make God happy. The offering of Jesus had nothing to do with God. The offering of Jesus had to do with the heart of man. We are needed repair according to the Old Testament. The tabernacle. The tabernacle was the problem. The time and shadow shows you the tabernacle is the problem. Where does the priest go in the Old Testament? The tabernacle. Why must I get you to understand this? God has never been the problem. God has never been the angry man. Even 2 Corinthians 5 from 17 to 19 tells you God was in Christ. Reconciling the world to himself, not counting their sins against them. So what I'm trying to say to you is that your understanding of the gospel is not accurate. If you think God was the one that had a problem, that Jesus' blood now appeased. No, it is the fact that Jesus came in to your heart. The, the, the idea, the type and shadow shows the problem was in the heart of man. Jesus came in. So where does Jesus enter? Where does he take his blood into? What does, where does he take his blood into? Into the heart of man. That type and shadow. What really entered your heart? What really washed you? It's not even physical blood. It's the spirit of God. Hallelujah. It's the spirit of God that enters your heart. That entering your heart is another word for forgiveness of sins. That entering your heart is another word for sonship. The problem with man was the heart of man. The heart of man was bastardized. God was fine. That's why he said to us in the book of Jeremiah 31, 31, a new heart and a new spirit I'm going to give to you. I'm not the problem. You're the problem. Your, your heart has been damaged. You, you rejected me. 
in rejecting me, what did you do? You damaged your heart. You, you started another cause of this world. And I cannot do anything. I can't reach you. The only way to reach you is to give you a brand new heart. So the brand, so when we say the blood of Jesus, we are actually saying the spirit of God coming into the heart of a man to wash him. So you can say the blood of Jesus, aka the spirit of God. Can you get a believe in amen? amen? Am I too fast? No. Am I too fast? No. Okay. Chat, am I too fast? No. Alright, because this is just on the side. Let's look at it again. Hebrews 9, 11. But Christ being the high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. The tabernacle of Moses was made with hands. That's why Jesus said, I, oh my, I will build my church. I will do it myself. Not made with hands. He says he entered in once. How many times did he enter? Once. How many times did the Old Testament priests have to enter? Daily. So they were failed priesthoods. While the Jesus Christ is the perfected priesthood, who, who did the work to ensure that we can have eternal redemption? Can we get a believe in amen? Church, can we get a believe in amen? Look at Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Look at verse 11 so that you understand. I'm only trying to explain seated. Amen. Look at Hebrews 10, 11. And every high priest, again, Daily ministering and offering, oftentimes the same sacrifice. What can with the same sacrifice? What can he not do? It can never take away sins. Verse 12. But this man, let me say stop. Let me say something here. Say, I, I choose, choose to be vulnerable to the truth, regardless of what I believe before. You know, there's a theology out there that actually makes it look like man sin. God is angry. Jesus came to make God okay so that man and Jesus can a man and God can fellowship. That's not the gospel. Amen. Amen. That is why the prophets of old were prophesying. What was in the prophecy of the prophets of old? In Ezekiel 36, 26. A new heart and a new spirit I will give to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 31, verse 31. A new heart and a new spirit I will give to you. What is that? It's the Spirit of God. Joel, it shall come to pass in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit. The problem was the heart of man, the nature that man embraced, that God could not do anything about until he gives him a new nature. So the resurrection is the only way God could legally give you a new nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the resurrection was not for God, uh, for to, be, to appease God. The resurrection was to appease man. Hey, I'll say it again. The resurrection, according to scriptures, was not to appease God. The resurrection was to appease man. How will it appease man? By giving man a new nature. Praise God. Praise God. You know, let me say it this way. So that you understand God's perspective on sin. God comes to Sister Funke, for example. Or let me say, I come to Sister Funke, for example. I said to Sister Funke, don't eat that burger. If you eat that burger, there's, it's got poison in it. That poison will injure you. Do whatever you do. They are deep. See, I've got spaghetti. I've got noodles. I've got rice. I've got vegetarian burger. I've got every... Uh, see, but that burger, don't eat it. If you eat that burger, you're in trouble. You will injure yourself. All right. Where does the Satan come in? Sister Funke, don't mind Pastor Dio. That burger... He doesn't want you to eat it because the moment you eat it, you'll be smart like him. That's the devil's rule. Right? What is in the burger? Poison. Right? So deception. Sister Funke stops to look away at the spaghetti that Pastor Daya provided. She stops to look away at the jollof rice. She stops to look away at the soft plantain. You, you, you get me? I knew I would connect with my audience. Yeah. She, she, I knew I said, brother, brother, because he's standing up now. I don't even know why. There are things that soft plantain can do. She, but, but what does Sister Funke do? She has the audacity to look away from soft plantain. What does she do? She puts her eyes on the burger. The more she looks at the burger, the more she feels like eating the burger. The more she just wants to touch the burger. The more she now say, what really is in the burger? I really want to know what's in the burger. What does she do? She picks up the burger, she eats the burger. In eating the burger, she's now poisoned. 
I want you to understand redemption so that you can understand authority. In picking up the bugger, she's poisoned. The bugger runs her mad. She's out of her mind, misbehaving, doing all that she can do. You know what the gospel, do you know what other gospel teach? Be, now that, remember, let's put it this way, I gave birth to Sister Funke. So what the gospel is now saying is that she, she's my daughter. She ate the burger. I'm now very angry. And I said, for eating the burger and running mad, not only are you, I'm not going to allow you to run mad, you will suffer. That is the stand. Then they make it look like redemption is how someone comes and now says, Daddy, she's your daughter. Uh, for, is it not just burger? Forgive her now. Then he now says, I wouldn't have forgiven her, but you know you. Maybe my wife now comes and because that's the way they pay me. My wife now comes and says something that I'm like, I wouldn't have forgiven her because I wonder. But you know what? It's because it's you. Funke, I forgive you. That's what we think redemption is. No, redemption is a father who beholds a poisoned child. A, a poison that has, has vowed to destroy that child. So his power of compassion is saying, what can I do to rescue my child? I will do anything to rescue my child. They say, oh, the only thing that can rescue this child is that they remove that part that has been poisoned. Okay? What has been poisoned? A heart has been poisoned? It's not a problem. I will come and give her my heart. And so what happens? The, the issue now is we are now begging Sister Funke, collect Pastor Dio's heart. That is what you are doing when you are preaching the gospel. Collect this heart. If you collect this heart, that faulty poison heart goes away. Collect this heart. This particular poison, it will kill you by itself. If you don't need nobody, you are dead. You, 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 you've eaten poison. Oh. And what is the, the ministry of intercession and preaching the gospel? So see, so people like Sister Ayola, they are praying, oh God, Sister Funke, oh she will collect this heart, oh she will collect this heart, in the name of Jesus, she will collect this heart, may she meet somebody that is able to explain that she should collect this heart, oh she will collect this heart. When Sister Funke goes, um, Sister Ayola goes outside and sees Sister Funke in a poison state, what does she say? Collect this heart. That's evangelism. Collect this heart. This is your only hope. And sometimes it gets you crying. Can't you see? Collect this heart. So who are the people out there in the world? People out there in the world are people who are poisoned. They are poisoned by the law of sin and death. And so God is just somewhere. If people say they went to heaven and they saw God weeping or Jesus weeping, he's not weeping out of anger, he's weeping out of compassion. Because he has children he has created who have not been poisoned. And he has brought the solution. He has brought the vaccine for the COVID. But they are saying, no, we're not taking it. And so he's broken. He's appeasing brother victory. He's appeasing his brother. So do something with your life. Go and tell people to collect this heart. Because if they do not collect this heart, oh, they will be destroyed. Oh, they will be destroyed. Oh, you need some power. It's not a big deal. Take power. Take power to show them I love them. So that they can collect this heart. You know the reason why we heal the sick and cast out devils outside in the world is to show people that just is alive. Yeah. That they might collect this heart. Yeah. That is why you realize that after the Acts 3, after the man at the crippled gate was raised up, Peter preached the gospel, 5,000 people were saved. So the anointing of God upon our lives is actually so that men can collect his heart. Amongst ourselves, do we get the healing, of, of the healing power of God work amongst us? Yes. Why? So that we are energized and we are okay and fit to tell another brother to do what? Collect his heart. Praise God. So the gospel is not about an angry God. The gospel is about an angry, uh, it's about a poisoned people who don't even know that they are poisoned. And they are dying daily. So the compassion of God is reaching out to them. That's why Ephesians 2 Corinthians 5, 19 and 20 says, we beseech you, we are begging you. Be ye reconciled to God. God is the one begging man. That's why we don't give ourselves to worry. We give ourselves to the things that matter. We give ourselves to the things that matter. So as we give ourselves to the things that matter, another man is able to stand in that day. Hey, ha, 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 ha. 
for our sake and for our cause and for the things that we have done. Another man can look up, oh, and say, I saw the light because Brother Olaito spoke. Glory to God. I saw the light because Sister Sarah would just not keep quiet. Oh, I saw the light because Sister Ayola would just not stop praying. I saw the light because Brother Sodik would not stop shouting. Everyone on the same cause, on the same journey, that, oh, that heart may be seen. Let me tell you, why did I get to all of this story? It's just to tell you that God is as interested in you using authority more than you are ever interested in it. That's why I said what I said. He is not one you need to beg. He has given the authority already. Hallelujah. When you understand, why did I go through all of those stories? When you understand his position, you understand that he is more interested in the miraculous than you. Yeah. Hallelujah. So there is never a need to say, oh God, don't disappoint me. He is more interested. God is the one saying, oh, brother, why don't disappoint me? And sure you are there to lay hands. And sure you are there to speak a word. And sure you are there to st steal the storm. Because you are all have got on the earth now. Are you hearing me? Praise God. That's why I told you what I told you. So we see a man at a beautiful gate. He's been there for 40 years. He could have been 45 until a man moves. The predicament of men increase. Did you hear that? He was there for 40 years. Let me tell you something also. See, Jesus was around when that man was crippled. Why? Because he was crippled for 40 years. It means no matter how great any man of God or any minister is, they can't reach everybody. Jesus didn't reach everybody in his time. Because that man was crippled for 40 years at the beautiful gates. Praise God. And while you hear the story that he healed all men, he healed all men, he healed all men, he healed all men, he healed all men. He didn't reach the man at the beautiful gate. Praise God. But there will be a Peter. And there will be a John. And there will be a Funke. And there will be a victory. And there will be there, there, there will be a Chichi. Come on, there will be. Who will go out? In the confidence of the fact that the Father is more willing for the miracle to break out in any place than they are. Hallelujah. 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 How do you use your authority? How do you use your authority? You use your authority, number one, by speaking words. Only by speaking words. Look at back, someone say by speaking words. All right, hey, let's look at the scriptures. Mark chapter 11. I gave that background. <laughs> so that you would actually take on board the things I have to say. Right? You know the, the scripture very well. There was a story about a fig tree and Jesus caused the fig tree that because Jesus was hungry. Say Jesus, Jesus. was a human being like you and I. You know, people think that Jesus Christ had a body that was different from Sister Chichi's body. No. How do we know? He got hungry. He slept. He grew up. Or, or do we think that he, he just, we close our eyes, we open our eyes, he stopped? No. That's why he was tempted at all points. He went through what you went through. Praise God. That is why, let me say this, that is why when he went to fast for 40 days, angel had to be there to strengthen him. If not, he would have fainted. Praise God. There are, there are some things you don't do in, in, in the energy of the flesh. The only time I know that just the longest fast that Jesus did was three days. The other ones he did it supernaturally. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says the angels came and strengthened him. Same thing with, same thing with Moses. Anytime Moses would go up and it's longer than a day, the angels were there. See, let me tell you, when you're in the atmosphere of glory, your earthly body is suspended. So you, it's, it's people that are like, oh, that will be down on the ground saying, ah, that's the 17th day, 18th day, 19th day. That person is suspended. If that happens, so it's not in your natural strength. Just like you know that for, for the person, anyway, praise God. So praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us go on. He was, I, I said all that to say he's a normal human being. He's a human being like you and I. Hallelujah. It would be, in fact, it was hunger that caused this miracle. He, he went somewhere. He was hungry. There was no food on the tree. What did he do? No man would eat from this tree anymore. Then they asked him the question. Master, that particular fig tree that you caused has withered. What does he say? Look at it in verse 22. 
Have faith in God. Amen. Look at verse 20. You know, it says, For I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Someone say, Say unto this mountain. Say, say, say unto this mountain. What do you do? How do you use your authority? You say. How do you use your authority? You say. You say. Church, how do you use your authority? You say. You say. You continually say. You stay saying. And so we are going to be, we are not looking at, we are not in the region of confession. Why do we confess God's word? Why do we, it's important, why, or why do we confess? Why do we confess? If it's about speaking, it's speaking, speaking. Why do we confess? Look at Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Hebrews 3 verse 1. Why do we confess? We have said how to use our authority is by speaking. So let's understand the science behind speaking. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Hebrews 3. Are we in Hebrews 3? Yes. Okay. Hebrews 3, this one. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle. The, 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 another word for the apostle is the saint one. Consider the saint one. I mean, follow, look at it there. And the high priest, the high priest of our confession of Profession. That word, listen carefully, because I want you to know why it works, why it doesn't work, and what you're doing. That word profession or confession is the Greek word homologia. Homologia is gotten from a, a word homologio. H O M O L O G I A. It means to say that which has been said. Amen? Amen? Get it? Confession. So he, Jesus Christ is the high priest of our confession. Confession is saying that which has been said. Or saying that based on something that somebody has done. So based on the fact that we've got a high priest who has actually... What, what do high priests do? I said it to you. What, what do they deal with? The offer sacrifice. So, based on the fact that the sacrifice of sin has been done, the, the, has been done, and the fact that we are new creation, and the fact that Jesus Christ has, is now seated, you know the Old Testament prophet or, or high priest they stand daily. Where how is just now? He's what seated. Who else is seated? We are seated with him. And so, what then is confession? We said confession is the Greek word homologia. Homologia means to say. What has been said. So, why do we confess God's word? Why do we speak? We confess God's word off of what Christ has done. Do you get it? Yeah. I'm talking about confession. I'm not, at this point, I'm not talking about positive speaking. I'm talking about confession, the Christian, the God kind one. Why, do we, why will a believer say, I am holy? It's because of what Christ has done and what God has said. Yeah. So when the believer says homo, when the believer says I am holy, homology has happened. Yeah. He is agreeing with what God has said. Come on. So confession, one will be agreeing with what God has said based on what God has done. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. I'll say it again. So confession is agreeing with what God has said. Based on what God has done. And so the idea is this the heart of man is an encyclopedia of many affections. What do I mean by that? It's a place where many things happen. You know, as Brother Sonic is sitting down there, he might be saying, Wow, 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 wow. It does just come into his heart. How, how will I make my next 10 million? <laughs> That's the way they are. You say, no, 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 Brother, Brother Sonic is a very, very spiritual man. You'll be surprised the kind of things that people think about. Even when there's a whole star, you're saying, glory, what a watch. You're not thinking, hmm, I'm going to work. I'm going to work on Monday. I'm buying my clothes. That, that's the way they are. I'm understand what I'm talking about. That's the way the heart of man is. And it's not that you're a bad person. It's just the way, that's the way the heart is. Hallelujah. And when, if you're someone who is on the other side and you're given to worry, you just realize that your heart is, you know, we said our own is an encyclopedia. Your heart is like the, how many people have been to Top Park? Is it Top Park? Yeah. Yeah. Where different, different activities are just happening. 
At the moment he's thinking about redemption, at the other moment he's thinking about his child. At the other, everything is just jump, moving at the same time. That's the way the heart of man is. And so, because of the way the heart of man is, the heart of man, listen carefully, the heart of man, by function of how it is, has mountains. So when we say you shall say to the mountain, the first mountain is in your heart. There is no mountain bigger than the mountain in your heart. Amen. I'm talking about the starting point because as you deal with the mountain, what happens to them? Yeah, you level them. But at the starting point, just like for example, if you have never heard me before and you're hearing me, you have many mountains to climb. Because you're like, did he just say we are holy and blameless? How dare he? Did he just say that the spirit of God is the, is the gift of God? How dare he? Those are mountains you have to fight with. You fight with them. And I remember, right, when the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord told me that you are going to have a very small stature for a very long time, right? So don't, don't major a lot in just telling people the truth just like that. He said to me, I remember very clearly, he said to me, tell them the truth and show them from God's word. So it's not about you. It's about the truth. You know, because, you know, I used to have many, many encounters. I'll go, I'll be invited to go and preach. And the moment I get there to come and preach, they would think I'm the one to invite the guest minister. <laughs> there was a time that I, I was in the teaching, I just saw someone looking like, like, brother, invite the real person coming now. <laughs> so, you know, so there's a tendency, that, like, we were, we, were, we were promoting one of my books in Nigeria, and so I flew over, and the, the brother was about to buy the book. I was just there watching how the team in Lagos was doing their stuff. I was just there. And he said, and I was looking, oh, this is a beautiful book. It's a wonderful book. And it was hot in Nigeria, so I was just wearing a round neck and trousers and palm slippers. Right? And I, was, I just said, let me go and observe monitoring. The guy just said, oh, wow, 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 oh, wow, oh, okay, oh, this is lovely. Oh, wow, oh, what a powerful man of God. I was just there. I just strolled there to where they were. He was, he's, he's, is this him? <laughs> it's like you probably serious here. <laughs> and I came in front of him. I was like, ha! So. <laughs> That's the reason why I don't go out to Nigeria. <laughs> but I was like, how dare you? But the Lord had told me, say, brother, you've got a small frame, man. So just show people from the word of God. If not, you are going to be part of the mountains they have to deal with. Amen. So that's the way the The mountains are bred for you as you continually stay upon that which I've said to you. Say them. Shout them. Rejoice about them. And don't let the devil talk you out of it. For the championship, the workmanship, the reality is already gotten. The victory is already yours. Don't let him talk you out of it. Talk to the mountains. And they will hear you. They will hear you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at that. He says to us, he says to us that there are mountains, the greatest of them is the mountain in my heart. So I use confession or I confess God's word to do what? I agree with God's word to silence the mountains in my heart. Corinthians will call it casting down what? Imaginations. You will cast them down. So while people are big on casting out devils, I love to cast out devils too, but there's one you cast out with you too. Yeah. You cast out imaginations. Where the, those, the, the, the Greek word imagination is from the word logismus. Logic. Logos. Words. That's the Greek word. The way man thinks. How man sees things. So how do you cast down imaginations? By agreeing with what God has said. How do I use my authority? By agreeing with what he said. Not what, how I feel like what he said. The Lord is my light. He's my salvation. He's the strength of my life. The hero in him I am strong. He is my strength. That's what he said. I confess those words to silence the mountain in my heart. It's first my heart. And then yes, I speak God's word. To silence the mountains out there. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when I speak, I use my authority. So now, for example, when there is a, a son, if there is a demon possessed person, or there is a situation with a storm on the sea, or something is going on, there could be two mountains. 
The first mountain might be the fear in your heart that maybe you did not know that you got power over that demon. That's a mountain that needs to be dealt with. And the second mountain is the fact that, okay, there is a demon in somebody that you need to speak out against to get the mountain, to get the mountain out. Are you getting my point? Yes, so what do we do? So the believer is a radical speaker. He speaks to renew his mind. And he speaks to make things happen. That's right. What does he speak? Now notice it. What does he confess? So the greatest way to use confession is to confess God's word. Yes. Confess what he said. I've got power. God's power works on the inside of me. Look at how Peter used power. Peter said, silver or gold. Remember, homologia is saying something because it has been said or saying something based on what has happened. So via the resurrection, Peter would say, silver or gold, I don't have. So he was talking about, I did not, I don't have money. Economically, I'm not doing well. But leave that aside. Such as I have, I do what I give to you. Listen to the word, such as I, I. Try and say possession. possession. You know, if I remove my wristwatch, Brother Francis, come. If I remove my wristwatch, you know, as I'm removing my wristwatch, you know, I'm not shaking. I'm not afraid. I'm not in any way like, hey, hey. as I'm removing this wristwatch now, the person, uh, the person that owns it is looking at me. So take that. Such as I have, I give to you. You see, as I've given him that wristwatch, it's mine. All of the authority to give the wristwatch to him is, it's not an example, it's, real, it's reality. Praise God. So you can go back to your seat. Praise God. Such as I have, I give to you. Such as I have, it is mine. At no point will I go and say, hey, hey, the person that I, no, it is mine. What am I trying to say to you? The power of God is yours. Now, religion will not like it. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. The more you get away and conscious that the power of God is yours. You know, how many people here have given someone clothes before? You give the person the clothes because it's yours. It's yours. Can you see God's power is yours today? It's yours today. It's not a prayer point, it's a fact for now. You know, I'm not praying, oh God, I want to give brother, bro, 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 brother Francis my rich word, glorify yourself. Do a new work. May the rich word leave my hand. No. The power of God is mine. mine. I cast down any imagination that makes me believe or act or think that is not mine. So the first mountain is that thought in my heart that makes me look like I'm a normal person. I say, no, I am supernatural. I've got this supernaturalness because he came out of the grave. And I will continually remind my mind because sometimes my mind might go on holiday. Everywhere I go. Praise God. You know when I talk like that, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about you. Everywhere you go, the power is there. Everywhere. 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 Praise God. Words. You see Jesus use words. You see, just use word. Let me share with you another one and we conclude tonight. Brother Francis, come. But this one to give me my jacket. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I want you to help me hang this one. <laughs> it's cold outside. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Another way. Another way. Another way you would use your authority. And I need you to pay attention. I did that purposely. Another way you use your attention, your, your, your authority is by touch. Someone say touch. Say these hands have power. Do you know that anything that you confer power on has power? Let me say it again. Let me say it again. I am saying that if, for example, I can be singing with this microphone, then I say this microphone is covered by the power of the Holy Ghost. Guess what? If I gave this microphone to someone that was sick and they touched it, they get healed. Let me say it again. The power of God in me is transmitted one by words and also by touch. You must understand that the power of God flows through you. It flows through you. This is why you start to understand that your presence can actually make a difference. What switches it on? A consciousness. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. 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 Let us look at it now. Look at Jesus carefully. Matthew chapter 8. We start to round off. The consciousness starts to beckon. It starts to come on thee. And it changes things. 
Matthew chapter 8, we see in verse 2, And behold, there came a leper, and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean, thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Look at verse 3. And Jesus put forth his hands on him and did what? Touched him. Touched him. How do I with my authority? My touch. My presence. And it's a consciousness, brother. It's a consciousness, sister. Remember, in this kingdom, we live by faith. Remember, I always say, anytime I'm especially going for a specific meeting, it's called a healing meeting. I remember in those days when the Lord was teaching me, I was about to go out. Caris was just three years old. I removed my jacket. I said, Caris, because I like to take pictures, I take a picture of him. I said, oh, wow, you look so funny. I took the jacket back, put it back on. Went for the healing meeting. Right? That, when he was wearing it, it was meant to be a jacket of his daddy playing around with him. But when I'm in a meeting, what makes a difference is the consciousness. It just, it's a consciousness. And I say, you know what? I just finished preaching. I'm tired. The power of God is, because it's on me, it's already on this jacket. Pass it around to the sick. Put his head falling out. Bah, bah, bah. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. What is the difference? A consciousness. Where is that consciousness? With the believer. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, I'm trying to say to you. The power of God is on you. You switch it on via a consciousness. And it starts to affect people. I always tell the story of myself and my wife. We have this particular chair in our house. That's where I sit down and I pray for hours. I don't just there pray for hours. And then one day I just said, as from today, anyone that sits on that chair and has a problem, I don't care what it is. The problem is gone. For as I'm sitting down here, I have laced that chair. You know, and so one of the disciples always will be like, ah, but they have spoken. She just went to sit on it. Boom. She just came back. Ah, I'm pregnant too. <laughs> <laughs> and we were, everybody was like, oh, yeah, 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 he's an easy, he's, 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 what do you call that thing? It's a coincidence. For there, apparently, I think it's, I'm the only one that's permitted to study without getting pregnant. You know, I just went there for the way you going today. What a lovely day! Which one month later, I'm pregnant. I, I just told my wife, That chair, <laughs> <laughs> that chair now became a tourist center. And people were not passing that, that, that. People just come over to the house and just say, These are really difficult, man. I need to sit down. <laughs> it was sitting down, people that broke the chair. <laughs> I didn't stop them. But the point was, the power was in a man. Mm -hmm. He only transferred a part of it on the chair. Mm -hmm. I am trying to say that you must, come, you must become conscious of the fact that your touch changes things. Yes, come on now. Hallelujah. Strange stories. I'll give you one to help your mind as we close with this service. There, had, there was a man who was married to this lady who heard us preach about the fact that the power of God is transferred with a touch. Your body is where the power is. You can touch something. Our husband wasn't born again. But she said her husband lost money. You know what she did? She laid her hands. Strange things. I didn't, you see, I have not had that result because I'm, I didn't believe in that direction. I'm just trying to tell you that people now be... So she laid her hands on the money and transferred those power on it. And the man likes money. She gave the guy money. In a few days, the guy was just saying something was just troubling me, troubling me. He was just having this unrest and he just got to a place. He heard the gospel and was saved. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The power in the believer. Who knows? Who is sure? Who now starts to visit? Touch! 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 You see, it's all throughout the Bible. Because of our time. Luke 4 40. They came to him, every one of them. He touched them. He touched them. As he touched them. Say, My presence is power. He touched every one of them. Every one of them. And they were healed. We conclude tonight with Matthew 8. <laughs> this is the story of Peter, Peter's mother-in-law. 
He's not feeling fine. I don't even know if Peter gave Jesus the permission. You know, sometimes people want their mother-in-laws to be sick. <laughs> so they can stay in one place. <laughs> Jesus is just there. Say, oh, the mother-in-law. And why? There's something about me that is, is a diarism. There's something about me that makes me think that Jesus likes good food. Because the first time he causes the tree, because um, there's no food on the tree. Now he's in Peter's house. And Peter's mother-in-law apparently is the one that cooks the meal, and she's not feeling fine. Listen to what Jesus does. He doesn't even ask for permission from anybody. The Bible says he goes, he touches her. Someone say, touch! Touch! The Bible says she rose up and ministered to them. Hallelujah. <laughs> ministered to them. Touch. Oh, can you be inspired today that you are not normal? Can you be inspired today that your body is not normal? Your clothes carry God's power when you switch it on. Can you be inspired to know that someone can be sick in their bodies and they enter your car and they are healed? Yeah. By God's power that you switch on. God ain't doing it, you are doing it. Can you inspire to believe, to know that someone sits in your car was a demoniac, he's mad and he's just okay. But the fact that he's just there in the presence of something that you have touched. Praise God. Someone say touch. Someone say touch. Someone say touch. What have we learned today? The two ways. What's the time now? Because I've given out my resource. I don't know the time. And I pray to my last thing. I can go for, for. That's the time? All right. Father, we give you praise. We give you the glory. Because now we know how to use our authority. We speak words. We get conscious of the power of God in our touch. Rise upon your feet tonight. Play for us. Rise upon your feet tonight. Rise upon your feet tonight. One of the beautiful things about this teaching is that it can be practiced. One of the beautiful things about the local church is that it can be practiced. We're going to do something now. Saints will minister around to saints, but just follow the instructions. First off, if you needed a touch just to get a correction of something bodily, if you're in this service, just come here. Quickly. That needs a correction. Anything that needs a correction. Because you see, let me tell you why this is the easiest way to work. Saints have heard the word about the touch. They now know that the touch. As I'm speaking to you now, it's just time for you to switch on. 